One of the most frightening developments in the occupation of Iraq and the so-called war on terror is actually something that most people have never heard of. In addition to the 150,000 troops that the U.S. has on the ground in Iraq, the Bush administration has deployed a shadow army of some 100,000 contractors. Of these, tens of thousands are heavily armed mercenaries that roam Iraq with impunity. Among the most powerful of the companies operating in Iraq is Blackwater USA, a secretive company based in the wilderness of North Carolina. It's headed by a right-wing, Christian, conservative bankroller of President Bush and his allies. And Blackwater envisions itself as the FedEx of the national security apparatus. But the reality is that Blackwater has become a prime player in the war on terror, and nothing short of the Bush administration's Praetorian Guard. I would like to raise my children to grow to be soldiers, but then a general would decide to be Blackwater USA largely operated in the shadows of the U.S. war machine until the morning of March 31st, 2004, when four Blackwater contractors were ambushed and killed in the Sunni city of Fallujah, Iraq. Their bodies were burned and dragged through the streets. Two of them hung from a bridge over the Euphrates River. For most people, it was the first that they've ever heard of private military contractors operating in Iraq. That was the Mogadishu moment of the Iraq war. In many ways, it was the day the war turned. Unlike Somalia, when the Clinton administration pulled out, the Bush administration initiated a massive revenge attack. They laid siege to the city of Fallujah, killed hundreds of people, displaced tens of thousands of others, and in the process inflamed the Iraqi resistance that haunts U.S. occupation forces to this day. The Bush administration came to power with a radical privatization agenda. We see it in our schools, prisons, health care system, and law enforcement in the United States. The occupation of Iraq and the war on terror had brought the greatest privatization of warfare in modern history. Blackwater USA has become one of the most powerful private actors in the so-called war on terror. It provides the Bush administration with an extraordinary amount of political cover. The deaths of Blackwater contractors and other war contractors are not included in the total death count, even though some 780 of them have been killed in Iraq. Their injuries don't get calculated either. Their crimes don't get punished. What you have is a revolving door. Blackwater and other companies benefit the Bush administration, and in turn, the Bush administration and its Republican allies in Congress have shielded these military contractors from any effective oversight, any effective accountability, any effective legal system. Their operations are shrouded in secrecy, and people in Congress find it almost impossible to get information about Blackwater and other companies' operations. And we know virtually nothing about this. We think about 40 cents of every dollar goes to private military contractors. We think about 800 of them have been killed in Iraq, but we don't know that. They're not even counted. And we think there's about 25,000 to maybe 40,000 engaged in military activities, in combat-related activities, but we don't know, and we can't find out. Blackwater USA has 2,300 men actively deployed in nine countries around the world. They have an additional 20,000 contractors at the ready. But while Blackwater has operated in Iraq and Afghanistan, the company increasingly has its sights set on deployments inside of the United States. Blackwater setting up a new facility in Illinois, another one in California. I was in New Orleans in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina and I saw Blackwater mercenaries speeding up and down the streets in unmarked cars, heavily armed with M4 machine guns, flak jackets, other weapons strapped to their legs. And when I talked to the Blackwater guys on the ground and asked them what their mission was in New Orleans, they said they were there to confront criminals and stop looters. To have mercenary companies which have operated in Iraq, Afghanistan, and elsewhere in the war on terror, essentially declaring themselves above any effective laws, now deploying on the streets of U.S. cities, should be seen as an ominous threat.